Hi there, it's Lee here, and this is part two of the POS mining box build. So we've got the uh, POS box right here. The build has been uh, completed, all the hardware, everything is set up. I'll just give it a quick test and everything is running uh, fine, uh, at least in principle, as far as we can tell. So in this video series or this section, I'm gonna be covering all the software side of things. So I'll be doing the Windows installation, just giving you a basic run through of that. Then also the installation of uh, the wallets and the basic setup of the staking wallets and how they run. I'll also cover uh, things like the sound level from the machine and also the power usage. Uh, just checking things like CPU usage overall and to see whether this CPU is a good design uh, for this kind of build, you know, once the uh, wallets are running. So that's what I've been covering in this uh, section. So if you haven't already watched it, go back and watch the hardware section. That's where I do the, the entire build from start to finish. Um, but this section is gonna be all about the software setup. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the POS box around, uh, really just to get the cables and everything in there, makes it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, I'll do the first part of the installation um, on the screen and you just kind of watch it from this kind of perspective. Uh, once the Windows is installed, I'll go to like a proper uh, screen capture and uh, cover the rest of that installation with you and you'll better see on the screen um, a lot better resolution. So just gotta put the power connectors in. So in the previous section, you would have seen that I didn't fit a CD-ROM drive. There isn't really, well, there's kind of technically space for it, but there isn't an opening on the front uh, to fit a CD-ROM drive. So I'm just gonna be using this, which is just a uh, small, lightweight, um, removable or portable uh, CD-ROM drive. Uh, I've used this plenty of times before. It's really good and uh, simple to use. So it has two USB uh, connectors, and one is for data and one is for power. So you just need these two connectors. Not too sure if you can hear that noise. There's a slight noise, but I'm not too sure at this moment where it's coming from. It's actually quietened down a little bit now. So I'm just gonna go into the BIOS uh, because we wanted to boot from the CD-ROM drive first rather than the hard drive. Um, I say that normally you would kind of boot from the CD-ROM anyway, but um, on this hard drive, I've got a previous installation of Windows. So I'm just gonna kind of stop that before it boots to that section. Okay, so that section, it was just a splash screen just whilst it was loading from the CD-ROM drive. So first part of the Windows installation, I'm not too sure whether you guys want to know about this stuff, whether you're familiar with it or what your sort of level is in, in terms of IT and stuff. So I'll just kind of skim through a few of the uh, basics. Um, so like I said, on this uh, one, um, I'm gonna have to do like a fresh installation. Okay, so we've just gone through that section. We've set the language and also the product key. Um, I chose uh, that I didn't have a product key and we're just gonna go through that uh, standard installation. We can add in the product key uh, later. It will just go to Windows activation. Um, so in this section here, we have the option to um, upgrade or it's like a custom install. And the reason why we've got that option is because I had a previous installation of Windows on that drive. So this time what we're gonna do is a, a custom install. Um, and it will give us the option here. So you can see the partitions have broken down. So what I'm gonna do is remove all of the partitions and then we're just gonna format it and we're gonna start with a single partition, of basically a completely fresh installation of Windows with no other uh, files or uh, previous Windows installation kept at all. So you're just gonna wipe it completely clean and start from scratch. So now we're just left with a single uh, section of space. Uh, obviously prior to this, I, I cloned the hard drive and everything's backed up so we don't have to worry about the uh, data, etc. And then from here, we can just go to next. You can also, from this point here, you can sort of separate partitions and stuff like that, but that's not really what we uh, need to do for this video. So now the Windows installation is just going to continue on and it will take a little while. So I'll leave all this running and then after this, I'll do the, um, the screen capture when it comes to installing the software and showing you about setting up those wallets for staking. Okay, so the Windows installation has completed. I'm just installing some drivers now. So there's chipset driver and network and audio drivers. So I'm just installing those from the disk that was provided. Uh, that's fairly straightforward stuff. And then I'll move on to the screen capture. You can see on the other screen, I'm just in the process of copying my blockchain files and wallet files uh, from this machine here. So I'm just gonna put them onto a USB stick and then I'll transfer everything across um, to the uh, mining box. 
Okay, so just to capture some of the audio levels, if I'm just quiet for a moment, you can kind of hear what the normal operation is like with just the power supply and the CPU fan. So pretty much all of the sound is coming from the tiny CPU fan, which is just under here. If I put my finger on it, you'll, you'll hear a difference in tone. So it's a tiny little fan, but it's making a little bit of noise. It's not um, exactly loud, but um, it's just sort of there in the background. Okay, so I've done the Windows installation and also the drivers. I've just done a quick sound test and uh, just to sort of see what the audio levels were like. Um, with the machine under the desk, you don't really hear it at all, so that's a good thing. So just in the BIOS now, you should see on screen the, the proper more high resolution screen capture. Oh, sorry, so there it was. Um, yeah, the, um, the power control. So I just wanted to set it to restore uh, power uh, based on the last date. So you can see on the screen, you've got a couple of options. So you can, so in the event of a power failure, um, you can, or power re um, restore uh, effectively. So if the power goes off and it comes back on, you're asking what the machine uh, what it's going to do so it's either going to stay off it's going to turn on or it's going to remember it based on the last state so if the machine was on the power goes off then comes back on it's going to return to its previous state so that's what we're going to select so it's long sorry that's a, a long-winded way of explaining it but yeah essentially it's going to default back to how it was previously so that was uh, pretty much it for all of the uh, boot options So it's quite weird with this splash screen because it kind of doesn't, the splash screen kind of interferes with what should be shown. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but when I was doing the Windows installation, you could kind of see the splash screen, but behind, but then the Windows installation was kind of overlapping it. It's a bit weird. It doesn't, it should just disappear. So I might, um, I think that was one of the other things I was going to remove in the BIOS. And now we are ready to install our wallets. First, uh, Windows is going to kind of interfere and in trying to install all of its own updates. So I'm just going to block all those for the time being. So on, I've already plugged in a USB pen drive. So it's this SanDisk one. And now I'm going to show you the installation of the PIVX wallet. So PIVX is a POS wallet. So it also has like privacy features and stuff. I'm not really going to go into those details, but it is a POS-based wallet, so you can stake your coins and you can earn an income over time. So from my uh, USB pen drive, we've got several files and folders. So I've got the PIVX, which is the blockchain and wallet folder. So that's a folder that I copied across from uh, my other machine. And then I've also got a PIVX, which is the QT, which is the program folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy across these two are just to the desktop. Whilst I'm at, I'll copy my other QT programs as well. I'm not going to show you these other ones that they're at this time, uh, just because it will take too long to share everything with you. So we just copied all our QT programs and now we're going to copy our blockchain. So if we open up our local drive, I'm going to open it in a new window. And then we've got users, we've got owner, which is the account name. And then here we should see, we need to show hidden files. So if you go to view and then hidden items, we'll see we've got this app data and then roaming. And now I'm going to copy our PIVX. So this is our blockchain folder. So if I sh I'll show you what's inside there. So you've got our wallet backups, the wallet.dat file, uh, peer info. There's also a config file as well, but most importantly is the, well, not really most importantly, but the blockchain file is in there as well. So I'm going to copy that from my USB stick to the local hard drive. It's going to take a couple of minutes to copy across. It's a couple of gigabytes in size. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is obviously because I've got my wallet already set up. If I start from just a new a new wallet, it will start completely from fresh. I'll also have to download the blockchain entirely as well. 
So by doing it this way, I'm just basically moving that information across from the previous computer system. Uh, what that's copying across, just to show you, in order for staking, you have to have a, a config file and I appear to have lost it. Oh, no, I haven't, there it is. So for each um, staking wallet, you'll have a corresponding .com file, or if you haven't got one, you can kind of create one for it, but you need to do this in order for the wallet to be able to stake. So we've got this pivx.conf. So if you right click, we can open it with notepad. And you can see inside there's virtually not very much information at all sometimes in these uh, .com files you'll have um, some mining info some api info and also collect into uh, like a range of peers and things like that but in my one all i've got is staking equals one and that's just to let the the configuration when the wallet starts up that i do want to use this wallet for staking so most um, post wallets will require you to have this line in your config file um, in order to be able to stake. So I just wanted to show you that first. And how are we getting on with that? Is that copy completed? It appears so. So now we're ready to open up our PIVX QT wallet. So it's in the folder and then we're just gonna run the program. What I'm also going to do as well is uh, just open up the task manager just so we can see the load on the um, CPU whilst this is running. So I did check when the machine was idle and the wattage it was using was at the lowest it was uh, 19 watts, which is really low, really impressive, um, up to around about 25 during that sort of idle to low CPU usage. So if I put some extra load on the CPU now, as we run the program, um, I'm curious to see how much load is on the CPU and also how much uh, wattage that we are using as well. So let's fire up the program. Okay, so you see there's a little bit of load on the CPU, but only sort of a 40%. I'm just gonna have a quick, I have to look under the desk to sort of see what the wattage is. Yeah, so, oh, it's up to 60% now. Um, yeah, the wattage is, uh, it's using like 35 watts. Um, that seems to be the peak. So maybe even at like 100% load, I'm gonna guess in it's probably only gonna use about 40 watts, this system. So that's really good for the low power uh, usage element, which is one of the things that we was going for. Okay, so our wallet has opened up. You can see our balances, etc. So in order to set it to staking mode, um, so like I say, you've already done it in the config file, that's one part of it. And the next part is you have to leave your un wallet unlocked and ready for staking. So we need to unlock our wallet. And we need to click on this checkbox for anonymization and staking only. And we click okay. And then this little icon here, the one with the little up arrow, is gonna to change to a green icon and indicate that we are staking. But first it will take a little time to update the blockchain first. Okay, so our wallet has now um, synchronized uh, fully and you can see the little uptick uh, arrow there that indicates that we are now staking. So it took a, a little bit longer than normal to kind of get the wallet up and running. I don't know if that's because I moved it from the previous machine and it took a little while to uh, synchronize or whether it's the CPU load, whether this CPU is obviously not quite as fast as my other one. Um, also the CPU load never went above um, 60%. So I'm not too sure if that's the reasons for it. Uh, that was one of my primary concerns with uh, running multiple wallets on this kind of low end CPU, whether it's gonna be up to the task. So that will be yet to be determined. But the wallet is up and running, so from this point onwards, we can just leave the wallet working and it will do its thing and it will earn us an income over time. So some people are gonna ask about what, what the earnings um, like, how much can you earn from your coins, etc. 
So each post uh, coin on wallet is different, uh, but typically the earnings are between sort of 1% up to about 10%, unless you go into masternode sort of territory and that will pay um, significantly more. Uh, but with PIVX, for example, I believe they pay 5% uh, per year based on your tokens. I don't think there's any minimum uh, requirement. I've not looked into it um, a great deal. I'm just getting into the uh, stake inside of things myself. But generally, it's about 5% per year based on your coins. And you just need to leave the coins in your wallet, leave your wallet staking, and leave that wallet running over a period of time. So that's where I am uh, with it about now. So I'm going to continue on, I'm going to install my other POS wallets and get them all up and running and I can do a, a bit more um, research into exactly how they put load onto the CPU and whether the CPU is going to be enough and also the earnings um, over time. I can see whether they're going to meet my expectations and uh, of course I'll share with that uh, with you guys in the future. Okay, so that's it for this video. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching. As always, any questions or comments, put those in the comments area below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. I put this type of content out on a regular basis and it would be great to have you as part of our community. So till the next one, see ya.